welcome back one second to this channel as per trend. Oxford movement. This is the topic that we are going to delve deep into this video. So just have a request before going into the main topic. Subscribe this channel and share this with your friends. And don't forget to comment your suggestion, your opinion about this channel. So now let's begin without wasting much more time. The main topic that I have promised to discuss here is Oxford movement. Actually, if we analyze the term, it will surely give us a information that probably the movement began from Oxford University or probably uh, the proponent or the supporters of this movement were hailing from Oxford University. So in short, we can say that uh, those proponents who actually ignited this movement uh, are from Oxford University. So now one question may surely arise in your mind. Why had this movement taken place? This is the question that we need to remember here. You all know that any kind of movement uh, is not the result of sudden eruption of anger. Rather, there appears a large number of anomalies, there appears a large number of problems. And whenever those problems are getting congregated, then they result in a form of revolution. If you look into the history of uh, our Indian freedom, you can see that there were many problems, many factors that were congregating with each other and finally they erupted. And uh, in this form of eruption, we find the revolution, we find the change in our society. Surely, uh, behind the Oxford movement, uh, there were some of the reasons that we need to discuss here. The first thing that we need to remember is uh, the decreasing of the religious value in the then time. Oxford movement actually took place in the very first half of the 19th century. So here we see that uh, the people are now gradually uh, decreasing the value of the church. People are not uh, regularly going to church and attending the uh, sermon or lecture that were delivered in the church. There were some of the liberals uh, who were just considering themselves that uh, church had no power to their destiny. So therefore, there appeared a group of protestants uh, who thought that uh, the uh, orthodoxy of the church can never maintain the human life. So therefore, they were gradually becoming quite liberal. And as a result, what we see that the value of the Anglican churches were gradually decreasing. And those bishoprics or archbishoprics, it means that those priests or the father of the church, they thought that the people were going astray. They are going to another way from the theological perspective, from the religious aspect. And this way is nothing but decremental. This way is actually destructive for the common being. So therefore, the bishop freaks or the father or uh, the uh, church uh, people or clergymen thought it necessary to bring some reformation, to bring uh, some orthodox, some solid reformation that will again reinstate the power of the church. And uh, in 1830, we find a radical change in the relationship between church and the state. Earlier, there was a custom that uh, those persons holding any official position, any government official position, uh, there appeared uh, a certain kind of religious uh, liturgy. And the name of the liturgy is uh, Holy Supper. Holy Supper is nothing but a certain kind of feast arrangement where many kind of people gather there and they celebrate a person's success, a person's achievement. But whenever this law was repealed, 
then the charge thought that uh, it is actually humiliating them the law is actually humiliating the church the position the supremacy of the church so therefore it actually stuck into the heart of the church and those people who are involved with the church and there was also another reformation that is uh, some of the churches lands were given least to other persons so therefore the church has becoming a puppet in the hand of the state power in the hand of the administrators so the people who were actually in the overwhelming position of the church they began to think that it is not acceptable in any way why administrators while politicians why uh, politics will interfere into the benefit of the church and here in this respect the irish church temporalities uh, law must be mentioned here and uh, as per this law uh, the church uh, uh, has no power to do its own reformation whether it is the administrators it is the politician who must uh, uh, take um, control of the church and they try to uh, make reformation as per the need of the common people but here the uh, clergymen the people of the church they began to think that why should politicians interfere for the betterment of the church because the people of the church the uh, catholic people again i may repeat here the catholic people are now thinking that they are actually uh, holding the uh, apostolic tradition that means that they are actually the given power to uh, disseminate the sermon of jesus christ as jesus christ is considered the first apostle and he employed uh, 12 apostles to disseminate to spread the doctrine of christianity among the common people and later we find that those uh, 12 disciples they also engaged some of the people to spread the doctrine of christianity and in this way the tradition went on so we can say that the first apostle was jesus christ and the next one was his disciple and gradually uh, the next one is also um, the disciple and the disciple. So in this way, the uh, uh, position of uh, apostle went on. So therefore, the um, people or uh, the father or the bishop freaks or the arch bishop freaks that uh, were assigned to deliver the church uh, in the Anglican Catholic uh, churches, they thought that uh, they are given the God-given power. So therefore, they are not uh, uh, willing to show any kind of subjugation to the uh, state power, to the politicians, to the administrators. So therefore, they began to uh, think how to regain their lost glory. So therefore, uh, they tried to um, assemble, they formed some of the uh, communities, some of the Catholic communities to revive the uh, ancient uh, rules and regulations of Christianity. Some other factors that were responsible for this movement is the de-establishment of the church. In many places, especially in Ireland, uh, uh, there were some of the churches were uh, de-established or destroyed. And even some churches uh, powers are uh, diminished uh, by the uh, politicians by the administrators so therefore the people thought uh, that they should protest against the uh, administrators to protest against the royal power so that's why uh, the uh, bedrock of the movement uh, were prepared but it is uh, in 1833 when John Cable uh, in his uh, university, uh, Oxford University, gave a lecture in the name of Acid Sermon. Here he pointed out that uh, the uh, politicians or administrators uh, should never interfere into the church because church is a divine being. There all kinds of religious doctrines are discussed where the 
attainment of consolation is highlighted so why should the state power the administrator or the politicians interfere into the church because both are holding to diverse to opposite positions while the uh, state power or the politicians or administrators or the royal power they are just thinking how to um, achieve the material gain but uh, the church is thinking that uh, only uh, resorting the way of true Christianity one can achieve uh, salvation in life so therefore as they are diverse in their opinion so one should not interfere into another this is the main thing that here uh, Keble um, uh, announced in the lecture and gradually this uh, lecture was spread among the entire university students and also it spread gradually among the common people so that's why we find this uh, tradition of regaining of reinstating the uh, lost glory of the anglican church as a form of movement and this is termed as oxford movement i think that it is also clear to all of you now the fact that we need to remember here who are the main proponent of the oxford movement as i have mentioned one name that is john cable so john cable is the first proponent and later we find uh, uh, henry newman was also uh, involved in into this movement and pussy was also involved into this movement and they published their uh, doctrines, their uh, opinions uh, in a pamphlet named uh, Tracks for the Time. And uh, those people, those persons who followed uh, the uh, doctrines uh, of the tract, they are called Tractarians. Just remember the term Tractarians. Now here one thing that uh, surely uh, is striking in your mind that uh, this movement being a religious movement has any kind of importance in respect of literature this question may arise to all of you and i think that surely surely this question is now rising into your mind and you are scratching your brain why should we concentrate on the religious movement whenever we are going to discuss about the literature yes here uh, we need to remember that though uh, those writers uh, uh, especially john cable pussy and uh, newman they were involved in the reformation of the church but uh, their writings have left an indelible mark in the history of english literature and uh, with the help of this movement the writers, especially 1830s to 1840 or 45, within this time period, we find that writers are writing as per the doctrine of the Oxford movement. Especially here we find that the writers are writing against rationalism. At the very beginning of the 19th century, we saw that people were becoming much more concerned with rationalism. They were beginning to use their own brain power. And at the same time, uh, they are now raising the question against God. In fact, the hold, the stronghold of the uh, Christianity is gradually getting loosened in this time. So, here the writers are writing against rationalism that means that they are merely writing some of the ideas which does not follow any kind of rationalism here one thing we need to remember that this time the romantics were now gradually dousing down their own writing power that means that they were not at all producing any kind of fruitful writing and uh, almost all the romantists uh, have uh, gone to take their eternal sleep and uh, here the new tradition that is the realism is gradually increasing yes this is the thing that you need to remember here that uh, writers actually uh, sought their penchant to produce uh, ground zero reality that means that whatever 
experiences they have got in their lifetime they were going to write down them into the pages of the books so therefore in this time we find that the writers are writing uh, almost all the books uh, from the point of realism